Welcome back to the channel guys, thanks for joining me. In today's episode we're going to be looking at changing a fuel injector in an Audi A6 on the C7 chassis with the 3 litre TDI engine with the engine code CDUC or CDUD. Now to find out which your engine code is, all you need to do is Turn your ignition on and then hold your trip reset button for around 10 seconds and then the bottom right just where the parking light is just above it you'll see your engine code pop up and there you go so this is the CDUC now you've confirmed your engine code before you go any further there are a few specialist tools you're going to need for this job as well now for a start with you're going to need an M8 spline piece and that's to undo the stretch bolts to hold the injectors in. Next, you will need a T30 Torx bit, a torque wrench, a 17mm spanner, a small flathead screwdriver, a small ratchet with a 7mm socket on, and an extension bar for it. Now the next tool you're going to need is a bit more specialist. Now I'll put a link in the description for this set for these injectors in this vehicle, which are the Bosch Piezo injectors. Now, basically what it is, is a slide hammer to remove your injectors if they're stuck in there, which if your injectors failed, it most likely will be stuck in there. So the most common reason for these injectors failing is actually the seals failing and allowing the carbon to build up around the injector. So yes, you have it in here, the slide hammer, you also have the special part to actually screw on to the top of the injector. And you also have these open sided sockets in here, but for some reason in this kit we didn't have the correct size, so actually I had to use a 17mm spanner. But you can purchase these separately in a 17mm with the open side, and that's to remove the high pressure pipe off the top of the injector. Now I would also recommend purchasing a replacement seal kit for all of the other injectors because if you have a failed seal on one you're most likely going to have more failed seals in the near future so i'll put a link in the description for the seal kit as well which is for this particular vehicle now i actually have here one of the failed injectors from my vehicle and basically the most common fault with these is the little small copper washer if you can see that that sits on the bottom of the injector there they normally vaporize and it starts allowing the exhaust gases to go up the side here and it usually just destroys the injector in the process. So that's why I do say to replace the seal kit. The seal kit actually comes with, with six of these. You get a sm small o-ring that sits just here and you also get six new stretch bolts for the clamps to hold these in. Now it's very important to replace those bolts every time you remove them because they are stretch bolts. Also, it's worth noting that once you've fitted a new injector, they, it will need to be coded to the vehicle. Now, you can either take it to a garage to have it coded, or if you have VCDS, you can code the injector yourself, which I'll show you how to do at the end of this video. And all you need is the code from the top of the injector, if you can see that. Make sure you take them codes down in the exact order of what cylinder they were fitted to, so you can tell at the ECU what injector is where. Now let's head outside and I'll show you the process for removing and replacing the injectors. But I will say I'm actually not going to be removing my injectors today because I've only just fitted the new ones in to get the vehicle back on the road. But I can still go through each step that you need to know to remove it. Standing at the front of the vehicle, the cylinder numbers, you've, you have cylinder 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now if you're working on this side, you're going to need to remove this tank. But this, this is where you're going to need your T30 Torx bit on your little ratchet. So there's two bolts down here, just there. Now you want to remove them two bolts. Once you've undone and removed both of these two bolts, make sure you undo this plastic clip just here on this pipe. And then make sure to release the pressure in the tank first by undoing the cap, just to make sure all the pressure is released out of it. Once you've done that, you can move on to removing these small clips on the pipes here. A little flathead under the clip there lift it upwards like so then that pipe should just pull straight off like so now you may lose a little bit of engine coolant in this process but not to worry you just have to top it up afterwards now the same goes for this clip just here 
remove that, lift it up. It can be a bit fiddly sometimes. There we go. They will just pull straight off. And that will allow you to lift this tank up. Actually, before doing that, there's a, actually a plug down here. If you uh, remove that plug, there's a little clip on the bottom part of it. Once you remove that, that will allow you to lift and move the tank just enough out of the way so you can access the injectors. There we go. Once you've moved the coolant reservoir out of the way, that will then give you access to your injectors, which are just here. And you've got your stretch bolts and your clamps holding them in. Obviously one here, one here, and one just down here. First of all, you're going to want to remove this pipe work off of all the three injectors. And to do that, it's just like a small clip on the top, small screwed over under that, and lift it upwards towards you, just like so. It pops up just like that, and that will allow you to actually pop them pipes off. Be very careful not to break this little pipe though on the side here because it is made of plastic and you can break them quite easily. Once you've removed that, you want to go ahead and remove the high pressure pipe with the 17mm spanner. Now I found this is actually the best way to do it because the open sided sockets are really difficult to get in here. But when you go to undo them, just be very careful not to damage this little pipe again as I said, especially on the new injector when you put it in. But once you remove these, from this point and at the top here, remove the pipe completely and then you want to remove this plug on the actual injector with a small clip at the top here just like so pop that out of the way so it doesn't catch on anything obviously at this point obviously all you've got left holding it in is your m8 spline stretch bolt and clamp so you go ahead remove that take the clamp out and all you're left with then is the injector which will be looking something like this by this point now what you want to do is actually get your, if I pop this in here for now, your specialist part or your slide hammer kit, obviously this piece. I'm not exactly sure what thread that is. It does seem to be a pretty unique thread. And you screw that on to the top of your injector. And obviously your slide hammer onto this. And then you can go ahead and start removing the jet injector out of the vehicle. Don't be too aggressive with it though, just give it a few gentle knocks and it, you will notice it starts to pull out of the vehicle. Just be very careful when doing so. And it's the same process for this injector and this injector as well. Now it can be a bit fiddly on the number four injector just here, because obviously your tank might be a bit in the way. So you may have to just maneuver things around a little bit just to access that injector down there. Now, once you've removed the injector, you're going to need to clean up the port where the injector came out of. Basically, you have to get in there with some wire brushes and some um, alcohol cleaner and whatnot, and just give it a good clean up to get all the black carbon out all the way down to the bottom so it's nice and shiny. Taking care not to do any damage in there and making sure the seat at the bottom where the copper washer sits is nice and smooth. Once you've done that, depending on whether you're fitting a new injector or not, if you have the new injector, it should automatically come with the copper washer already fitted to it. All you have to do, which I found, is fit the little black O-ring on here because the new one doesn't seem to come with one for some reason, but in the seal kit you'll have one anyway, so it doesn't matter. So if it's a new injector, you can go ahead then and put this injector back into the vehicle, taking note of this small number on the top here, if you can see that. Take a note of that number and what cylinder that this injector has been put into, so you can then tell the vehicle later on which injector is in what cylinder. Now, if the injector is going to be reused because there's nothing wrong with it and you're only changing the seals, obviously give it a good clean up, being careful around the tip here not to damage anything. Put your new copper washer on, your new O-ring on, and then you're set to put that back into the vehicle then as well. Now, once you've put the injector back into the vehicle, first thing you're going to want to do is put your brand new stretch bolt in with the clamp. And now that's going to be torqued up to six newton meters and then 90 degrees now that's very important that torque because if it's not enough or it's too much you can you can damage the injector or the seal on the front once that's been torqued up to six newton meters plus 90 degrees on the torque wrench you can then go ahead and put your high pressure pipe back on now this wants to be torqued up to 25 newton meters and now i know that can be a little bit difficult if you can't get in there with a torque wrench but just be very careful when you're doing them because you don't want to crack them or damage anything there. But anyway, once that's on, you can then go ahead 
and replace your fuel pipes back onto there. Just that pops on. You should get like a nice positive click like that. And then you go ahead and push the clip back on. That's locked on there now, that is. And then all you have to do is remember to put the plug back on to the injector. Just like so. There you go, that's nice clipped on. And then you obviously repeat that same process for your other injectors. Now, if you're working on the injectors on this side of the vehicle, where your airbox is, now what you want to do is actually remove this pipe, which has two seven mil bolts, or you can use a flathead screwdriver on them. Remove this one, this one, this pipe comes out the way. Then you can take this plug off just here, remove this out of here, which actually is like a lock on here. You lift this lock up and this twists anti-clockwise and then that will just pull out. And then you just have to remove your air box, which is pretty much just sitting there. You just have to wiggle it out, undo the clips just here, along here, and then wiggle this box out. And then that will give you a good access to the injectors, which are just down there. You've got one there, one there, and there's one hiding right just at the back there under the, underneath this pipe just here. But yeah, it's exactly the same process as I just described with the other injectors. Obviously, you remove the plug, your high pressure pipe, your stretch bolt, which is just there, and you can just see the clamp on that one. But yeah, once you've removed them out, just give them a good clean up, or if you're replacing it with a new injector, but just remember to give the the ports a very good clean up to make sure they're immaculate inside there. You don't want any dirt or junk in there when you're fitting your new injectors back in there. Now, of course, when you come to putting everything back together, just make sure you check and double check everything. Obviously, remembering to put your two bolts back in there, first of all, then you can put the pipes back on, which just pop on, make sure they're firmly on, and then you push, pop the clip back down, just like that. Same on this one. In actual fact, this clip's decided to close itself. Just make sure the clip is still lifted up when you put them back on or she might struggle there you go pop that back on there like that and you just pop the clip back down and obviously remember to put this plug back on at the bottom here and the same goes for the other side obviously just to make sure you've got your two clips back on your pipe work all this is securely back in its position which can be a bit fiddly actually to get that box back in and just remembering that this plug is back on now you've fitted your new injectors to the vehicle, it's time to code them to the ECU with the codes that you've taken off the top of the injectors earlier on. Remembering that it's very important that these codes go to the correct cylinders that the injectors are fitted to. Now, if you don't have your own diagnostics, you'll obviously have to take it to a garage that does have diagnostics and have them coded. But if you do have your own diagnostics, then you can go ahead and code the injectors to the vehicle yourself. If you have VCDS, I can show you how to do that right now. Okay, so to code your injectors to the vehicle, from the home screen of VCDS, you want to go into the control modules, just at the top left, go into there, then you want to go into 01 engine. And down here on the right hand side where it says adaptations, 10, you click onto that one, and at the top here with the drop down box, you'll see here you have your injectors. So obviously you choose your correct injector, say for example, number six, and you will see here the stored code, which is that, that's the code that was on the injector that you took out. Now the new code that you've written down on the new injector, you want to import down the bottom here. So if you delete that code out, you will type your new code in there, and then down the bot bottom here, click do it. And then that will store your new value into here. Now once you've done that, you can go back and that's your injectors coded to the vehicle. And obviously if you've fitted more than one new injector, you go back into that again, drop down box, choose a different injector, say number four for example, see it's a different number here now. Then you in input your new number there and you click do it. By putting this code in, you're telling the ECU what it needs to do with that injector and its calibration settings. Because in some cases, you may notice that the vehicle won't even start once you've put the new injector in until you've coded it. But on my particular vehicle, it actually did start, but it was just running a little bit rough, that was all. Now, at this stage, it might be worth just popping into the auto scan, just to do a quick scan and delete any codes that are still in there from the failed injectors that you had before. Now, I know there was a lot of information that I've just given to fit the new injectors, so I'll put all the relevant information down in the description, from the torque settings for the bolts down to the kit that you need to do the job. 
That's including the links for the specialist toolkit and the seal kit that you will need. Now, if you have any questions or there's something that I've missed, please put it in the comments down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And I really hope this video has helped you out in some way. So until next time, guys, take care.